Well, the steady trade between 710 and 717 being pegged out in some quarters. What's your forecast for today? Is it in line with that? Absolutely. I think that we've seen a huge rally across the board in terms of uh, the RAND itself. You've seen a lot of support from offshore investors back into the bond markets. We've seen the bonds rally um, as well as gold price rally and certainly sentiment is starting to pick up within the riskier regions and emerging markets. So you've seen a rally in the likes of the Eurozone which has also helped to bolster um, a little bit of the RAND strength. We also haven't seen as evident uh, as we did the last time we chatted uh, the intervention of the Reserve Bank. So that's keeping uh, the RAND supported it around that 710 level but that being said if you look at the technical levels on the RAND currently if it does continue to trade in this manner we potentially could trade back below that 7 uh, pivot once again. Of course when it comes to event risks uh, we've got uh, budget speech clearly in focus uh, on Wednesday and uh, many anticipating a fairly conservative uh, approach on that front. What are you anticipating on that front? Anything in particular you're keeping an eye out for? Um, well, I think that the budget itself has already been priced into the market. I think that there's certainly going to be things looked at like job creation, etc., which we're all expecting. I think interestingly will be what was discussed at the State of the Nation address, specifically around the nine billion uh, job um, spend that they, they're potentially going to be doing, and then the tax incentives for manufacturers. There was a number of about 20 billion spoken about. So a little bit more clarity around that will be expected, and certainly how we're going to grow this economy with an outlook that the economy is starting to pick up some form of pace and hopefully we will start to see spending initiatives in the right direction. Of course where we've got a lot of positivity around uh, you know the RAND at these levels gets the attention of the South African Reserve Bank and a lot of focus on intervention uh, you know that it would at these levels the assumption is that it would continue on its path in an active uh, accumulation of dollars. Uh, the kind of activity you're anticipating from that quarter? Well, we've seen a, a very much subdued activity base coming over the last week and a half, two weeks. Re, uh, relative to what we were seeing previous to that, it's almost benign. So it started out relatively strong at the beginning of the year after we saw the uh, movement at the beginning of December. Hasn't been any major intervention or certainly uh, any accumulation of dollars uh, to the same degree over the last kind of week and a half, which has started to create that element in the market that we may in fact see RAND at slightly better levels. You know, you must keep in mind that with the Reserve Bank being inter intervening and being actively intervening in the South African market has kept uh, the players looking for much, much narrower ranges, which at these current levels we're starting to see a breakthrough of good technicals, which indicates that we potentially could see much stronger levels. Well, talking about central banks, with the euro dollar strength in focus, the euro marked a fresh three-week high this morning as speculation mounts that inflationary pressure may prod the ECB uh, to tighten before its counterpart. What's your view on direction there? Because we did have hawkish comments out of the ECB on Friday. We saw a string of uh, PMI data out this morning and then that benign reading of fourth quarter Eurozone GDP last week as well. Absolutely. I think that what we're starting to see come out of the Eurozone, which is quite interesting, is um, elevated levels of manufacturing, good production levels, um, a, a good sentiment coming out of your consumer sentiment, your business sentiment around the confidence factors that resulting from job creation, resulting from positive um, Asian you know, demand that we're starting to see come through quite aggressively, specifically in the German region and the French region, which is helping to bolster the entire Eurozone, despite the fact that the likes of Ireland, Spain, Portugal, etc., have still got massive deficits to um, to curb, but nonetheless, as long as the region itself is starting to come online, the sentiment around that is relatively positive. So you've seen that euro rally once again up above 137, which is quite significant. And in Iran perspective, that just bodes well for uh, South Africa and certainly the emerging markets. Also, having said all of that, while investors sometimes ditch, uh, you know, the risk-sensitive euro when such uh, geopolitical concerns flare, like we've seen in North Africa and the Middle East this time round, the fact that we've got unrest in an oil rich region and you know that it could possibly send oil prices even higher is supporting the euro for now because of inflationary concerns right? 
I think it's the inflationary thing is really more around the fact that there's an outlook for interest rates to be hiked at some point. And that's where the um, investor interest is coming in. So you're starting to see some form of trading around um, outlooks for interest rates. You're seeing it come through in the likes of the um, BOE statement last week, certainly around expectations around inflation in the, in the UK. You're seeing it coming through in the Eurozone. What you're not seeing in the US is their concern around their inflationary movie. So I think from a South African perspective though, oil prices are definitely something that we need to keep in mind and unfortunately with what's happening now in Libya, potentially this spills over into Saudi Arabia, it could put very negatively on the oil price which potentially could see another loss of about $10 on the barrel. Um, you've seen a positive impact on the likes of gold prices which are rallying. We potentially could even see $1,420 per barrel, uh, sorry, per ounce um, on the gold price. And that's really been driven by inflationary outlooks and obviously perceptions around the risks. Well, Bridget, let's leave it there.